Hello everyone, this is Brid, and today we're going to take a look at Tyranny. This is a game... <coughs> wonderful intro. This is a game where you are a fate binder, the executioner of justice for a tyrant in a land in the process of being conquered. I'm very interested in this. I've seen a couple of videos on it. I've played around with it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and jump into the character creation, and I'll show you how the backstory stuff works at the very beginning. We'll go with a normal difficulty. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos' final conquest has come to our corner of the world and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos' ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos' minions. Tunan brings Kairos' laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the fate binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of fate binders when Kairos' armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? In the Northern Empire where you were born, men enjoy equal protection under the laws of the Overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of the Tears, only men may own or captain ships, but real estate is restricted to women. Men may lease, but durable ownership of the land in the Tears always passes to the eldest daughters or sister. Most sons enter their father's profession by their mid-teens. Those without a profession or family lands to work can find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty Archons. Criminals, derelicts, and others are often conscripted into the armies of the Archon. If a child cannot forge his own skein, skein, I've, I've never heard that word, he will certainly find one in battle. I'm gonna have a beard. Gotta rock a beard. Because I can't grow a beard for real. <laughs> Not one that's worth having. Um... I'm gonna go with that portrait. We will be a lawbreaker. <coughs> Accused of a crime you most certainly did commit. You stood before Tunon, the adjudicator, Archon of Justice, and argued your case with eloquence and conviction. Impressed by your logic, reason, and confidence, he found you guilty anyway. It is rumored that Tunon selects many of his agents from his prisoners, who better to catch the wicked than those versed in such ways. In his mercy, Tunon offered you the choice of two sentences, decades languishing in prison, 
or a lifetime serving him in the court of fate binders. The choice was an easy one, and instead of seeing the inside of a cell, you were trained in letters and numbers, magic and war. The laws you once broke are now yours to interpret and enforce. Okay. I'm gonna go with unarmed, because I want to be a monk. Leash a double attack on your target. We're gonna go with palm strike. It says that unarmed fighting is more challenging than other weapons. Damage is lower, but you attack more quickly, so we'll see how it goes. Secondarily, I'm going to take a short bow. I am ninja. Uh, tar target your enemy's feet with a ranged attack, hobbling them if successful. Heart shot. Delay your aim to focus on hitting the target's heart. Gain additional accuracy for this attack and leave the target bleeding. I'll go with that. We will be a fist on a purple back or golden fist on a purple background. We serve the flaming fist. I'm gonna be black on black for my colors. Blend into the shadows, huh? <laughs> That's actually kind of not true. So like. I'm just joking. I know, but like, let's say, like, like, like in the snow. Have you ever seen snow camo? It's not solid white. Mm -hmm. Because if you go stand on the hillside in the snow, solid white, you stick out because you don't, you don't, you, you break up the pattern. I will be Lucien Derthel. He uses that name in every game he plays. Not every game. Just about. Okay, quickness determines how often a character can use their abilities in combat. Finesse increases accuracy and armor deflection, might, attack, and ability strength. I'd actually put one in resolve, maybe. So, damage, accuracy, and armor deflection. Ability cooldown, health, and will save. Spell strength and magic defense. And this affects, resolve affects like all of your resistances. Nah, I'm going to go with that. Okay. Alright. We're going to take dodge up to 30. We're going to take bows up to 30. I want my athletics 35, subterfuge 40, bows unarmed. Okay. Subterfuge is your roguey skill, finding traps, opening locks. Dodge is your ability to dodge in combat as I understand it. Athletics is intimidation and like climbing ropes, doing big buff person stuff, and then weapons. Oh, and lore is your knowledge of things and your intelligence for chat options. We will do the conquest start. All the world has fallen to Kairos, and now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, 
Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment. The mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the Conquerors. Until it's too late. During the Conquest, you will decide your character's action during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. The bastard city stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears. Built upon a natural harbor at the crossroads between realms, the city was a nexus of commerce to the Tears. It was the a nexus of commerce to the Tears. It was the center of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as the gateway to the continent made it a natural first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth as a soldier in Kairos' armies. Taking this city would send a message to the rest of the tears. Kairos' will is insurmountable. Uh, we're going to infiltrate. History would remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with advanced units of both armies. Preparing for the coming war, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do that. You joined the Scarlet Chorus as they raided villages and small towns, conscripting every able-bodied man and woman into the army. The voices of Narat emphasized the rewards of conscription and enslavement over wanton bloodshed. Apparently, his soldiers needed the reminder. The howling mobs of the Scarlet Chorus found easy pickings among the villages and frontier towns. Rallying an experienced gang under your control, you flooded the unprotected settlements with a deluge of bloodthirsty soldiers, rounding up the innocent for merciless rites of conscription. The young and infirm alike received makeshift weapons and examples were made of all who challenged your forces. Bolstered with fresh recruits, your army gathered strength for the invasion to come. We'll do an inside agent. I like to be a spy. With the border garrison captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked in the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. Again, we're going to go Scarlet Chorus. You came to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Chorus behind the city walls. The Scarlet Chorus were better operatives than soldiers, and this work required a subtle touch. After accepting his deserved payment, the smuggler uncovered a long-forgotten tunnel that intersected with the sewers of the bastard city. Armed with maps of the subterranean layout, your Scarlet Chorus allies fanned out to occupy various city districts under cover. They spent the ensuing weeks murdering key officials and sabotaging defenses wherever possible, weakening the Tears' capital under the very noses of its leader. Your tactics of infiltration placed you in the Bastard City ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for the arrival of Kairos' forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the city? No, I don't challenge people to honorable combat. That's not a thing I do. Eh. 
We're going to go with that. Keeping to the shadows, you eliminated the leaders of the Bastard City one by one. And that doesn't belong to either of the factions. Some deaths were quiet and unnoticed, while others were gruesome beyond words. As a wave of murder overtook the city's elite, your deeds swelled in infamy. Well before the armies arrived, no one in the Bastard City felt safe in their homes, much less behind their walls. By the time Kairos' forces crested the horizon, the city was fearful enough to throw open the gates and welcome the, their new protectors. And the Bastard City Falls. The Bastard City settled into a new state of normalcy with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunan sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lathian's Crossing, or as a war advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. I want to be a judge. Years ago, Lathian the Bold founded a small merchant town at the intersection of ancient old walls. A pact between the settlers and a mercenary company meant that caravans were able to travel without fear of bandits or bane, and the town thrived in modest insignificance. Lathian's crossing drew Kairos' attention for the iron deposits in the surrounding hills. With the region under Kairos' control, the northern smith mages could set up workshops to refine ore and arm the disfavored with the finest weapons in the known world. The Archon of Secrets dismantled the mercenary support with a generous bribe, taking the crossing on a bloodless victory. Tunan dispatched you to travel alongside Kairos' forces and bring the order to the region. We'll do this. Kairos' smith mages worked day and night to create weapons. No one faulted their dedication, yet production was low. The plans that came to light proved divisive to the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus. On one hand, any additional manpower was needed for fighters, not forges. On the other hand, the celebrated weaponry of Kairos' armies needed to be fiercely guarded. I'm going to do that. Um, wait. So I'm either taking soldiers from the Scarlet Chorus <clears throat> or using Beast Men. I'm going to use Beast Men. The Scarlet Chorus were overjoyed to learn of a Beast Men conscription and grace graciously lent their support to your cause. The local beastmen were subdued and yoked to iron-bearing wagons, where their boundless strength and tirelessness proved critical to the smith mages. The disfavored grew agitated about exposing the secrets of iron to savages. You attempted to allay their concerns, but your words fell flat before a stubborn, uncompromising audience. do this one. Kairos' armies used Lothian's crossing as a reprieve from the war. The city grew more crowded as a mercenary army hired by the Archon of Secrets occupied the barracks, where they drained resources and escalated tensions. The disfavored wanted nothing to do with the cell swords, but the Scarlet Chorus sought to invite them into the fold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> The day I'm going to go with the disfavored. The disfavored demanded that the mercenaries be kept far from Kairos' armies. The righteous occupiers would not deign to share provisions or supplies with degenerate cell swords. You built a separate barracks and mess hall in order to keep the cell swords out of the army's way and enacted strict laws against disorderly conduct. 
The elite soldiers from the north had little patience for cell swords under the best of circumstances, and showed open contempt for the mercenaries born in the tears. They demanded that all armies, including their own soldiers, follow strict military discipline and be restricted to quarters when not on duty. After some discussion, you agreed that separate accommodations were the best possible solution, though the cell swords balked at the oppression, oppressive foreign custom, you convinced them it was the safest course. Tragedy struck when a mercenary hired by the voices of Narat injured a forge-bound artisan, leaving him unable to practice his craft. Tunan ordered the mercenaries to leave the city in the hands of Kairos's more responsible servants. Only a token garrison could be left behind while the armies returned to the front. As the disfavored and scarlet chorus showed increasing tension and hostility toward each other, Tunan decreed it best that only one force controlled the crossing. I think, just from what I understand, the disfavored are a better occupying force because they're more organized. Organi organization and discipline is good if you're going to be occupying a place. The disfavored placed a modest garrison in the settlement of Lothian's Crossing. Though the forest was larger than might be needed to police the small settlement, protecting the forge-bound ironsmiths became the true agenda of the defense force. As these magical craftsmen kept the disfavored invasion force suited in iron. Relieved at the departure of the Scarlet Chorus, the citizens of Lathian's Crossing felt they got the least of two burdens. You received word from Graven Ash thanking you for your decision. The forge bound and their weaponry could not be entrusted to the voices of Nerat. With the mercenaries expelled and Lathian's crossing under new leadership, Kairos' forces congratulated themselves on bringing order to the settlement and guaranteeing a productive flow of resources. Over the course of this diversion, the army front advanced further into the tiers. Your skills were needed in the realm of Azure, Stalwart, or the Vellum Citadel. The Vellum Citadel was a library fortress, the largest archive of the written words in the tears. The School of Ink and Quill protected and maintained the archive of ancient lore for centuries, standing apart from the political upheaval of the younger realms as an enduring pillar of knowledge and culture. Yeah, I want the Vellum Citadel. Year 3 of the Conquest. The Vellum Citadel was an archive and library of massive scale. Its inhabitants were known as the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that, centuries ago, carved out their own mountainous refuge on lands unsettled by the other major realms. Legends said that the Citadel housed a treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The Overlord's spies infiltrated the school and confirmed as much. The time was ripe to send a detachment to the Great Library Fortress and force the scholars to yield to Kairos. I'm going to do that. We're going to ensnare some stealthy sages. Siren, Archon of Song, used her power to enthrall enemy mages who crept beyond the citadel walls. After Kairos' forces rounded up the arcane practitioners, the disfavored began executing the new captives before they could share the dangerous knowledge. A crime under Kairos' law with the Scarlet Chorus. You punished the disfavored for executing mages bound to the Scarlet Chorus, ordering that several disfavored soldiers be given to the Archon of Song as her personal bodyguards. No, we're going to punish the disfavored. <clears throat> the wisdom of the sages and knowledge of the Vellum Citadel were too important to silence. The disfavored balked at entering the Archon's service, but your ruling left them with no recourse. Archon Siren delighted in having new toys to play with, and promptly enthralled her personal guard. You spotted them in camp days later following their new mistress with wide-eyed devotion.
Ta'u, the Spy Master's agents. A group of enemy mages surrounded the disfavored, claiming to be spies loyal to the voices of Narat. No one in the army could verify the claim. The disfavored readied to interrogate the mages, but the Scarlet Chorus protested, demanding that the prisoners be given to their custody. They couldn't risk the voices of Narat's secret f secrets falling into the wrong hands. Um... You ignored the disfavored threats, sharply reminding them that they marched at Kairos' orders and not their own whims. The mages were, rele were released into the custody of the Scarlet Chorus. The Scarlet Chorus accepted the mages into their company with gratitude. After secreting them with tents and out of earshot, you presume that a discussion or interrogation followed. When asked about it the following day, the Scarlet Chorus admitted they sent the mages to the voices of Narat with an escort, dispatching them under the cover of night without due authorization. You reprimanded the soldiers for keeping you out of the loop, but there was not else to be done in the matter. Disgusted by your appro approbation of the Scarlet Chorus, the disfavored forces withdrew from the field of battle. Your small detachment now lacked the manpower to take the Vellum Citadel. Tunon sent word that Kairos's patience had run thin. The Overlord would cast an edict of fire on the enemy. The parchment arrived in a slender case engraved of engraved iron. Written on it, the words of a spell powerful enough to destroy the Vellum Citadel. You had the choice of when to read the edict. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the devastation to come. You could also wait until sunset, giving them ample time to flee or make amends. No warning. Opting to give the enemy no quarter, you proclaim the Edict of Fire at the first moments of dawn, granting the enemy no warning of the destruction to come. Though the chorus insisted your actions doomed their spies, the disfavored applauded your decision. You read the edict as the new sun rose behind the citadel, casting a long shadow in its wake. You were the last person to see that hall of knowledge the moment before the devastation. The earth shook and red-orange light glowed in the foundation of the sprawling citadel, bubbling up from under the library. A torrent of lava heaved with explosive force, gushing from the windows and between loosened bricks melting hostile trenches in the surrounding land. The mages awoke to smoke and fire, for most it is already too late. Only a handful of bewildered mages escape the smoldering collapse of the massive library fortress. Kairos's will be done. The armies of Kairos left the devastation of the Vellum Citadel in silence. From that day forward, the tears came to know the once noble citadel as the burning library. This was an undisputed loss of resources, knowledge, culture, and life. But a message had been sent. The Overlord will not tolerate defiance. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. You were one of the last to depart from the mountains, and as you journeyed off, you spotted a few campfires in the mountains. They were mere specks, dwarfed by the inferno. The last gasps of survivors, or perhaps looters, from Kairos' armies bored and daring enough to pick through the ashes. Alright. That statue is crying blood, is it not? Yeah, looks like it. That's a lot of blood. The year is 431. 
and Kairos's invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. This cat's having a bad day. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance. But months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused. And Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict. A magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. So you're gonna shoot the messenger too? Got it. Right. The Overlord be praised. When I heard the avalanche, I feared the valley was sealed with you on the other side. The disfavored warrior claps her gauntlet to her breastplate to, to uh, the traditional salute of her legion. The commander wouldn't say why the governor of Lathian's Crossing would be coming, but since we have no forges here, I imagine you're here to knock some sense into the voices of Narat. She catches herself, clearing her throat with a smile. I mean, mediate with the Archon so that we might agree on a plan to wipe out these Oathbreakers. Can you hear that hum in the air? That glow around the rocks. The avalanche is Kairos's magic. The Overlord has sealed the valley. Your senses seem more than mine, good fate binder. I do not pretend to know much about such things. But if that was Kairos's magic and you're here on important business, well, you don't have to be the Archon of Secrets to guess that you're here to proclaim an edict. What does Kairos's have? What does Kairos have in store for the enemy? Ten years of festering plague, an edict of twisted bones. Glare silently. A nervous smile creeps over her as she waits for a response that doesn't arrive. I am asking questions beyond my station. She dips low, trembling as she bows. Forgiveness, please. Well, you've traveled a long way. I won't keep you further. I'm sure the Archons will want to hear from you at... Her voice is... Her voice is... Her voice falls silent. Her attention snapping eastward with alarm. Did you hear that? More runners. Third time this week. The Oathbreakers keep trying to send messengers through the mountains to gather help from the outside. She points over to the collapsed path by which you arrived, but they're a bit late for that now. Come, let's show these Oathbreakers a good fight. Space pauses.
on it. That's right, you whoop his ass. I'm gonna skip most of the tutorial stuff and just kind of explain as I go. It's very much like Baldur's Gate. I haven't played much of it. Just enough to get my bearings. Yep, climb down. Don't jump down. Do I have what this tech? No. And your skills level up as you use them, I've noticed, too. Like lore. Doing that lore chat option increases my lore experience. Alright, guys. This is going to be about all the time we have for today. When we come back, we will finish killing these guys and see what else is going on. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Dislike if you don't like what I'm doing. And please comment. I would love to hear all of your feedback. Have a wonderful rest of your day.